Uh, hello, everyone. Thanks for having my uh, paper on the program. I'm going to talk about CRIPS currency returns today. So basically, the blockchain technology has shortened the gap between having ideas and developing financial instruments based on those ideas. And because of this, we have thousands of cryptocurrencies in the market where some of these cryptocurrencies are uh, competing for a more efficient payment system, while the others uh, provide specific services based on blockchain technology. And uh, these cryptocurrencies have a very active trading ecosystem uh, with more than 200 cryptocurrency exchanges all around the world where people have been investing actively in this market. And because of such an active trading market and because of unique features of the market, like uh, the extent of the speculation that's going on, people in finance and economics uh, academia have been interested in pricing of these assets. But so far, we have a limited knowledge of what's actually driving price of these, uh, these assets and these cryptocurrencies. So for example, what drives cryptocurrency prices? What determines the return of structure of these assets? What's the source of the underlying value? And <clears throat> importantly, how do investors think about the underlying value? Uh, in this paper, I'm going to study the drivers of cryptocurrency returns and hopefully shed lights on these questions. And when we talk about uh, prices, uh, basically we have two broad frameworks for pricing assets in the finance literature. One is trying to explain returns based on characteristics such as size, book to market ratio, past returns, industry, uh, and we have a huge literature uh, on that framework. Uh, and basically in the context of cryptocurrencies, uh, people have tried to explain prices using, uh, using some uh, characteristic like this. And for example, we have Leo and Sivinsky who explain our cryptocurrency prices based on characteristics such as size, momentum, uh, volatility. But we also have a second framework that uh, explains prices based on investor demand. And the idea here is that uh, assets who have exposure to the same investor clientele should show uh, prices should move together or basically show a co-movement uh, in this context. So uh, in this paper, I'm going to look at uh, characteristics of cryptocurrencies and basically find that the characteristics matter for prices. But the main focus of my paper is on number two. Uh, and the idea is that I hypothesize because of unique features of cryptocurrencies, the demand actually matters a lot for pricing of these cryptocurrencies. So basically demand for holding cryptocurrencies can be perceived as a sign of user adoption, which can affect the underlying value of these cryptocurrencies due to the network effect. So we have economic papers on these, Kangli and Wang and Sakin and Zhang and uh, some other papers, but also people in crypto community think about these assets in the same way. And I'm gonna show you that. I basically use comments from Reddit pages of cryptocurrencies to quantify their reliance on this network effect. Uh, all right, so basically I study the structure and drivers of cryptocurrency returns within the framework of examining crypto investor demand. And how do I proxy for investor clientele having a similar investor clientele? I use these 200 cryptocurrency exchanges and based on uh, their trading location, I create a connectivity measure where two cryptocurrencies that trade on exactly similar set of exchanges, I label them as connected cryptocurrencies. So they have a high connectivity as opposed to cryptocurrencies that trade on entirely different set of exchanges who have zero connectivity. So I quantified the level of overlap in trading location of cryptocurrencies and that's my proxy for exposure to similar investor clientele and see to what extent that measure can explain co-movement of these assets. So what do I find? I first find that uh, characteristics such as size, trading volume, age, consensus mechanism, token industries, 
uh, explains part of the component of cryptocurrencies. But the high end, highest variation is explained by exposure to similar investor bases, which I proxy by cryptocurrencies trading exchanges. I find that cryptocurrencies with a one standard deviation more overlapping, uh, overlapping exposure ex uh, exhibit 0.22 standard deviations higher correlation. So the magnitude is large, is larger than what all other characteristics combined can explain. And to just give you a sense of uh, what the number means, if uh, you move two cryptocurrencies, two cryptocurrencies that uh, trade on entirely different set of exchanges, is if you move them on the same set of exchanges, their correlation goes up by almost 40% of the mean. So it's a very large number. Uh, and I find that the effect increases in time horizon. Like if you look at daily returns, the effect is weaker than when you look at weekly returns or bi-weekly returns. So the longer the horizon that you measure return, uh, the, str the stronger uh, the relationship. And I also find uh, that this effect is not explained by unobservable characteristics. So it's not the case that cryptocurrencies that trade on the same exchange, they have similar characteristics and uh, they co-move because of similar characteristics. That's not the case. If you exogenously move some cryptocurrencies on the same exchanges, which I'm gonna use a quasi-natural experiment to uh, examine that effect. If you move them exogenously, their correlation goes up uh, with each other. And I find that basically what I'm finding uh, reflects commonalities in crypto investor, investor demand using order flows, because for any of these assets, like for Bitcoin, uh, Bitcoin trades on more than 200 exchanges, you have uh, the order book of the same asset at the same time from 200 different sources. You can decompose the order flow or investor demand into uh, exchange specific, currency specific and a market wide uh, order flow. And I find that this exchange specific component drives most of the order flows of cryptocurrencies, even if you control for currency specific. Uh, and I also find that the network externalities of uh, user adoption basically explains uh, a significant part of this effect. So I find that exposure to common demand shocks translates into 36 to 51% additional co-movements for cryptocurrencies that heavily rely on the network effect. And I'm gonna show you how I measure this uh, network effect using social media data. Uh, I'm gonna skip the literature uh, for the sake of time. So I use three types of data, data on trading and uh, prices from more than 200 exchanges. Uh, I use technological features of these cryptocurrencies from various sources. And then I use Reddit, uh, a social uh, news platform. I use 25 million currency specific comments from Reddit uh, to capture the network effect. So my data starts in January 2017. Uh, I apply a lot of filters to capture basically the larger and more liquid cryptocurrencies, like the market cap should be above uh, $1 million and certain uh, trading volume. So uh, my sample starts with 23 cryptocurrencies and I have 17 exchanges at the beginning of the sample and the average listing per currency is uh, on 4.1 exchanges. And my sample ends with 485 cryptocurrencies, uh, 130 exchanges at the end after uh, all the filters. And the average number of listing for each cryptocurrency is on 9.6 exchanges. This is the geographical distribution of uh, exchanges. And there are other differences between uh, exchanges beyond geographical restrictions. Uh, so for, first, there, uh, this variation in geographical rotation, sometimes it comes with some restrictions, like BitHump is a South Korean exchange that's only open to uh, South Korean people. Or Zaif uh, is very popular among Japanese investors because it only accepts wire transfers in Japanese yen. So uh, there are differences in the nationality of people who uh, actively trade on different exchanges. 
There are also differences identity verification, limits on deposits, withdrawals, uh, transaction fees. So basically different exchanges can attract different investor clientels based on nationality, uh, the size of the trade, how active they are, how educated they are, or how, uh, how risk-taking they are. Uh, basically, we have different investor clientele and different exchanges. And we have frictions between exchanges that the money cannot easily flow between different exchanges. And importantly, we have a large variation in share of cryptocurrencies on different exchanges. For example, Ripple traded heavily during my sample period in those Korean exchanges that are only open to uh, South Koreans, whereas Bitcoin and Ethereum uh, traded more heavily on other exchanges. So based on similarity in the exchange, uh, exchange of different cryptocurrencies, I create a connectivity measure. So I hypothesize that those uh, cryptocurrencies that also trade on that South Korean exchange, they are more connected to Ripple and their price should move uh, much closer to Ripple than Bitcoin and Ethereum. Based on this connectivity measure, I can classify different cryptocurrencies into different clusters. So each color you see shows a cluster of uh, very close cryptocurrencies. For example, in this context, based on my measure, uh, Litecoin and Ethereum Classic are more similar in terms of trading locations than Ethereum Classic and Ethereum or Litecoin and Bitcoin. Even though these are Litecoin and Bitcoin are technologically basically uh, much more similar, they have the same history of blockchain, Litecoin is more similar to Ethereum Classic in terms of trading. Ripple, for example, has its own island here. Ethereum and Bitcoin, uh, Ethereum and Bitcoin Cash are uh, basically uh, more similar than Bitcoin Cash and Bitcoin. Okay, so based on these measures, I'm gonna uh, estimate if higher connectivity translates into more similar price movements as well. So I calculate correlation each month. I calculate correlation of uh, cryptocurrencies based on market adjusted daily returns. And I see if connectivity in the previous month. So the lag connectivity can explain future correlations. And I also look at similarity in other characteristics. And the first set of results that I see is that connectivity very strongly explains uh, co-movement. So one standard deviation higher connectivity translates into 0.24 standard deviation higher co-movement. And uh, I find that size also has an effect, volume, uh, number of trades, age, uh, being a coin or being token in a univariate uh, regression, that also has an effect. After I control for everything, uh, the impact of connectivity is by far the largest. So I have other measures as well that I calculate uh, the uh, economic magnitude in terms of the uh, marginal effect on the R squared or uh, to what extent they can explain the decile spread of prices and the connectivity measure is by far stronger than all these other characteristics combined. Uh, even after a control for lag correlation, uh, connectivity measure still has a very strong effect. Uh, that's, uh, that holds if I look at the subset of coins, subset of tokens, uh, if I look at a more limited set of cryptocurrencies with much larger set of uh, uh, characteristics to control for. And the effect is almost uh, monotonically increasing in connectivity. If I sort every month, if I sort the co-movement based on the size of connectivity, and I look at return correlation, this is a standard, so it doesn't uh, mean negative correlation. Uh, those cryptocurrencies that are highly connected in terms of trading location, they show a very large uh, co-movement in prices. And those that are not connected that much, they don't move together. And this holds specifically in many different settings, like whether I use prices in Bitcoin, prices in dollar, different settings. But importantly, it also holds when I sort cryptocurrencies within exchanges and within denominator uh, prices. 
So because different cryptocurrencies and different exchanges, they trade uh, in different denominators, in different fiat currencies, because exchanges might have some noise at the exchange level, that noise in reporting prices or converting uh, the fiat currencies into US dollar or Bitcoin, the noise can generate these co movements. But here I'm looking at within that South Korean exchange, within Bitcoin, and within all cryptocurrencies that are denominated in South Korean one. Uh, I, some of them are more connected because they are connected on other exchanges and some of them are less connected. I see that those that are more connected within that Korean exchange using Korean prices, uh, they basically show significantly larger co movement. So the effect is not coming from price difference between exchanges or any noise. And when I create a portfolio of uh, connected portfolio returns based on how connected other cryptocurrencies are to you and how large those cryptocurrencies are, I find that the effect increases in time horizons. And what it means is that like, if, if you look at this four week return uh, of 82 basis point, it means if Ripple generates 1% higher returns than Bitcoin in a given month, those cryptocurrencies that are connected to Ripple, they generate 82 basis point higher return than those connected to Bitcoin. So it's a very large effect. When these cryptocurrencies move, other cryptocurrencies that are connected to them, they also move. And uh, the effect also holds on a lead lag basis, uh, which I'm going to skip here. Uh, let me just briefly talk about this experiment. So I use the shutdown of Chinese exchanges as an exogenous shock to the location of cryptocurrencies. Uh, in September 2017, Chinese government shut down all these cryptocurrency exchanges. And because of that, we have a change in location of cryptocurrency. Just imagine two cryptocurrencies, half of their trading volume happened in Chinese exchanges, the other half on two other exchanges. Before the shutdown, these two cryptocurrencies were partially connected, but after the shutdown, they're completely disconnected. They don't have any exposure to the same investor clientele. They had exposure to Chinese clientele before, but they have, uh, they're exposed to completely different uh, investor clienters afterward. Uh, so when I look at the impact on uh, correlation, I see that actually uh, correlation between those assets significantly drops. And we also have some assets that their uh, connectivity actually increases after this shock, and we see that their correlation actually goes up. And the magnitude is very comparable to the baseline results. So it suggests that exogenous variation in trading location of cryptocurrencies, because it exposes them to different uh, investor clientels, it also changes their level of co-movement. All right. So uh, the next thing I want to talk about is that is this network effect. So the idea is that demand for cryptocurrencies may matter uh, specifically because uh, demand can uh, reflect uh, investor and user adoption of this cryptocurrency, which can affect the underlying value of these cryptocurrencies. We have an academic literature on that, uh, a growing literature. And people in crypto community also cons consider adoption and community building and a network effect a key source of cryptocurrencies values. Uh, and we can see that in the comments that I'm going to show you uh, from uh, Reddit pages of these cryptocurrencies. And many investors, many people in crypto com community perceive buying pressures on cryptocurrency exchanges as a sign of user adoption. So they see that people are buying on Coinbase, which is a cryptocurrency exchange, and they believe that's a sign of adoption. So because of these, these demand pressures that we see on exchanges can have an amplified effect on cryptocurrencies because they may be interpreted as a sign of adoption. So if we can somehow quantify the reliance of different cryptocurrencies on adoption, if there are some cryptocurrencies that rely more on adoption and some of them rely less, we should see the effect of uh, investor demand on prices much more significantly for those who rely more on uh, this adoption than those who don't rely as much, if this uh, channel has an effect. So I'm going to examine that. I'm going to try to divide the cross-section of cryptocurrencies 
into those that rely more on this network effect and user adoption and those that rely less. So I use 25 million currency specific comments on Reddit. Different cryptocurrencies have different pages on Reddit. So you can see that this is Bitcoin subreddit. This is Ethereum subreddit. So these are comments related to Ethereum. These are related to Bitcoin. And I read and label 10,000s of these comments as a training sample, as whether they're talking about, uh, they're basically relating the value of cryptocurrency to the network effect, user adoption, community building. And then I feed a random forest model to extract important features that distinguish these comments. And then I feed the rest of 25 million comments into the model to label them. And then I quantify the percentage of comments each month that uh, talk about these concepts for each cryptocurrency. So these are some example of example comments. This one says you should look at community support and number of developers working on projects for a certain platform. There is no other project with network effect even close to Ethereum. Uh, people on Ethereum community, they actually talk a lot about uh, the network effect, community building, uh, developers, users. Uh, this one says how many users can Coinbase on board every day. Coinbase is a cryptocurrency exchange. The more people that own one Litecoin, the faster the value grows. Right? So it looks at the demand on these exchanges and says the higher uh, demand for Litecoin, the faster the value grows. Uh, we have so many other examples. So I fit this random forest model and I find the important features that distinguishes those comments that talk about the network effect and user adoption. And these are some uh, features of the measure that I want to show you. If I look at this measure over time for Bitcoin, Ethereum, and Ripple, we see that in Ethereum community, in Ethereum subreddit, a huge percentage of comments actually talk about these issues, much larger than Bitcoin and Ripple. And uh, for example, the percentage of Ethereum comments that include the terms network effect user adoption, community building, and user demand are 6, 7.7, 13, and almost 17 times that of Ripple, respectively. And that's consistent with common sense about Ethereum, the source of value about Ethereum, which is built on this community of users and developers trying to add to the ecosystem, as opposed to Ripple, that's basically governed centrally and it signs contract directly with major banks and it has a very different ecosystem. Uh, and if we sort different uh, major cryptocurrencies based on this network effect, we see Ethereum, Ethereum Classic, Cardano, Tezos, basically these platform tokens, which they allow for uh, having decentralized apps and smart contracts on these platforms, they score very high in this network measure. And cryptocurrencies such as Binance Coin, Ripple, Litecoin, they actually score uh, relatively low. So I use this measure to basically uh, divide the cross section of cryptocurrencies into high network reliance cryptocurrencies and low network reliance cryptocurrencies. I mean, and I see if this measure interacts with demand pressures that I see uh, on the. Uh, yes. Me? Yes, it's Kathleen. I think we should conclude now so that we have a couple of minutes for questions. Sure, I'll be done in one minute. So uh, when, I, when I look at the interaction of this measure, I find that those cryptocurrencies that rely heavily on this network measure, like if you have two Ethereums, Ethereum 1 and Ethereum 2, when they have, when they're exposed to similar investor base, their co-movement actually goes up, but by 36 to 51% more than low network uh, cryptocurrencies. So here, for example, uh, the y-axis shows the return co-movements, the difference between high network cryptocurrencies and low network cryptocurrencies. If Cryptocurrencies are not connected. There is no difference in their, uh, their co-movement, but as they become more and more connected, those high network cryptocurrencies show a significantly larger co-movement, reflecting this demand effect, the, the uh, significant impact of this demand effect. So in conclusion, 
Uh, I find that cryptocurrencies return structure is mainly explained by exposure to similar investor clientele, uh, priced by their trading location, the effect increases in time horizon and leads to a strong cost predictability. Uh, it's not explained by unobservable characteristics. It practices for exchange specific, uh, a strong exchange specific component in crypto investors demand. And it's largely amplified uh, by this network effect that I just explained. And I conclude by uh, saying that understanding the demand side of the market is probably a key to understanding cryptocurrency prices. All right, thank you very much.